this portion of the scheduled meeting of the Ag Harbor Tenio tape for broadcast. And due to either technical reasons or topics for discussion that may be held in closed session pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act, there may be interruptions in the videotaping of these proceedings. And this meeting will be aired by EHT TV, Channel 97, on Thursday, April 25th. Right, Thank you. Could everybody please rise for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Cathero? Here. Ellis? Here. Hudson? Here. Paul? Here. And Fremont? I'm here. We're going to start out tonight with a couple of proclamations and presentations. Is there anybody here from our building department? Seeing none, just so we know that May is going to be uh, recognized as Building Safety Month. And we just like to let everybody know that. And we have a great department upstairs that likes to make sure everybody stays safe. Then we have a proclamation recognizing April 14th to the 20th, which was last week, but we didn't have a meeting, so we're doing it this week, as National Public Safety Telecommunications Week. So Mr. Caffaro, could you read that, please? Sure, Mayor. Not a problem. Um, whereas emergency that requires police, fire, or emergency medical services can occur at any time, and whereas when an emergency occurs, the prompt response of police officers, firefighters, paramedics is critical to the protection of life and the preservation of property. The safety of our police officers, firemen, paramedics is dependent upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from citizens who contact the EHT Emergency Communication Center. Public service telecommunicators are the first and most critical contact our citizens have with emergency services. Public safety telecommunications are the single vital link for our po police officers, firefighters, paramedics by monitoring the activities by radio and providing them the information and ensuring their safety. Whereas the public safety communications of the Township of Egg Harbor have contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, suppression of fire, and the treatment of patients. And whereas each dispatcher has exhibited compassion, understanding, and professionalism during the performance of their job in the past year. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the mayor and township committee of the Egg Harbor Township, County of Atlantic, State of New Jersey, that through April 14th through April 20th, 2024, was recognized as National Public Telecommunications Week in the township in honor of the men and women whose diligence and professionalism keep our township and our citizens safe. And thank you to all. I'd like to thank all of you. All of you. <laughs> Where's the rest of them? <laughs> yeah, no, That's a proclamation for you. And thank you also for cleaning up the township on Saturday. You did a great job. Chief, would you like to say anything? All right, first of all, uh, well, Mayor. Can, you know, there's nothing better than seeing a person behind the voice on the phone. That's why we're back there. Yeah, you do an outstanding job. Mayor and Township Committee, thank you. And, um, you know, those that uh, are attending the meeting, thank you as well. And um, just want to say, so yes, this is retroactive to last week. Uh, we spent the week recognizing our dispatch. Uh, we were trying to make every effort to make sure that they're recognized much more than they had been in the past. Um, and that's really a daily uh, goal for us in the police department. So one of the things I'll say, you know, the first line and first responders, that's basically what they are. Uh, you know, think about that for a moment. When one sees a first responder in the community, whether it's a EMS, fire, or police, if it's at a crash scene, a fire, a residence, uh, many of us tend to overlook these entities didn't arrive there without being dispatched by our dispatchers, our telecommunicators, uh, who or again, the first line. So they're the first to have contact with a person who may be experiencing their worst day. They're the telecommunicator and, and they're expected to provide first class service. They're providing life saving measures prior to EMS arriving. They're evacuating personnel from fire scenes before fire arrives. 
they're solving or trying to separate parties who are disputing before police arrive. And they must do this with tact and professionalism, all while listening, providing direction, and while multitasking by dispatching appropriate services. They are the calming voice for the people in crisis, and many times the first contact a person ever has with first responders, and they are the first contact. They work in a high stress environment. They have multi dispatching, they have to multi dispatch simultaneously. And what I mean by that is they may be handling a, a, a couple urgent calls at one time and navigate in between the phones and radios and different frequencies, um, all while, again, providing life-saving uh, services. So I've always felt that if someone wants to experience the stress and the, the weight of the, res like the responsibility, the weight of the world that's on, on their shoulders, come sit in dispatch and, and you'll see it and you'll feel it. So appreciate you recognizing them for last week and, and during their week that uh, they're being recognized and honored and we appreciate our communication officers here in Egg Harbor Township. Thank you. And our dispatchers and the chief of police clean, cleaned up Hingston Avenue this past weekend. You know, so they never stop working. Yes, just to add, so again, uh, Jim Lockerbie, who was up here, he works midnight shift. He gets off at six or seven in the morning comes to volunteer his time to clean up trash on the roadways in Acre Township, all while knowing he has to be back for his midnight shift on Saturday night. See, these are the little things people don't recognize or, or, or realize that are happening uh, with many of the people in our agency. So, you know, again, another shout out to uh, Dispatcher Lock. Thank you. Okay, and now we have a certificate of appreciation to the Egg Harbor Township Police Department canine officer, William Burns, and canine Odin. Is Odin here? Yeah. Odin is here. Ray, you want to come down with me? Okay. Yeah, of course I'll read. No problem. <laughs> We'd like to read this uh, to everyone, the certificate of appreciation. K-9 uh, Officer William Burns and K-9 Odin. K-9 Officer Burns and his partner Odin are being recognized for their fantastic recovery work and removal of approximately 4,500 bags of heroin. This removal pre prevented the distribution in our community for a street level pinch. This is phenomenal. No one knows how many overdoses were prevented and all the unsavory activities and behavior that comes from this usage that like impaired driving, petty theft, vagrancy, neglected family and children. It's tragic. Officer Burns and his canine partner Odin responded to a narcotic sniff from the Egg Harbor Township, or I'm sorry, the Hamilton Township PD. Officer uh, uh, K-9 Odin provided a positive indication on the vehicle and 16 ounces of heroin was located inside the vehicle. Without this positive indication, those narcotics would almost certainly have passed on to users, aiding in their addiction and all of the terrible uh, quality of life issues that result from it. The impact of, on our police and our community. This is one of many reasons why police canines are so essential and justify the canine function and existence in our department and in our community. Mayor and Township Committee proudly presents this certificate to K-9 Officer Burns and his partner K-9 Odin and wishes to recognize their outstanding dedication and contribution to the Egg Harbor Township Police Department and all of its residents. Does he feel, does he get it? Yeah. He gets it, right? Yeah. He gets it. Right, buddy? Right 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 right. I want to see Ellis pet though. Here. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, Mayor and Township Committee, once again, thank you for recognizing Officer Burns and Odin. Um, I'm not going to repeat what you kind of mentioned in that proclamation other to say that. So Odin is kind of what I would consider a hybrid canine. Uh, when, when they legalized, well, 
when they legalized marijuana and, and then obviously cannabis, what they did was they took a tool away from law enforcement. Um, so those canines that were trained in the detection of marijuana were pretty much shelved at that point. So Odin is kind of what is our new hybrid canine who is uh, trained now without the marijuana component. So, um, which goes to say, again, we kind of put off uh, restoring or um, um, we only had two canine officers in our ranks. Uh, historically, we've always had four canines. So we kind of had a, a, a brief period when we were trying to hire and get more staffing before we uh, got our canines back to you know full strength. So he, uh, Odin is number three. We have number four starting in a month at the academy. Um, I will say that based on data, the, the hit that Odin is responsible for, a street value, depending on where you live, it's, it's probably give or take about $50,000 value on the street. Um, and I would like to say that there's really no way you can measure on what has been prevented just based on uh, the recovery of that um, heroin on the street. So you've, and like you said in the proclamation, um, you never know how many overdose have been prevented and how many, you know, all the ancillary and quality of life stuff that impacts our community by having just that little bit off the streets. So with that, um, having Odin and hopefully our next uh, hybrid type canine on the streets will only be able to make our community that much safer. So thank you and congratulations Officer Burns and Odin. I'm actually just going to move a few things around why we have the police department here. We want to make sure we are swearing in a new SLEO 2 officer tonight. Um, and if he would like to come on down. Uh, this is resolu uh, resolution 211 appointing Michael Boyle uh, the second as a SLEO class two police officer. Can I have a motion please? So moved. Sure. All in favor? Oh, yeah. All right. Or do I do a roll call? Uh, roll call. Sorry. Uh, Fifero? Yes. Yes. Ellis? Yes. 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 Do you have anybody here that would like to hold the microphone? Uh, my mom, mom? sure. <laughs> <laughs> down. Go down. I, Michael Boyle. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly. And justly. Perform all the duties. Perform all the duties. State your position. Sleo class two. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. I do further solemnly swear. I do fairly solemnly swear. Or swear, affirm. Or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith. And that I will bear true faith. And allegiance. And allegiance. To the same. To the same. And to the government established in the United States. And to the government government established to the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, man. <laughs> Mr. Ellis is a former law enforcement officer, so he knows the world that you're going to be entering. It's your first time. No, I work for Atlantic City. Oh, okay. <laughs> I work for Atlantic City, too. Hang in there. Oh. Oh, you, uh, you can just. Right. 
All right, again, I hope this is the last of me. Um, but once again, Mayor and Township Committee, thank you uh, for um, you know basically endorsing and allowing us to gain another resource in the police department, a much needed resource. Uh, the SLEO 2s uh, in our agency, uh, we start them out at working the desk. Um, it's a great opportunity for them to gain experience. Um, as a young man, if he is 20 years old, so a uh, great opportunity for him to come in, learn the EHT way. Uh, one thing I'll say about Michael is Michael was a SLEO 2 in Atlantic City. He applied to become a SLEO 2 with our agency. At the same time, um, Atlantic City offered him a full-time position, and he declined because his goal was to come here eventually as a full-time officer. Uh, I spoke to Chief Sarkos about this young man, and I was concerned about that, obviously, that um, I didn't want to bring on someone who would be problematic with our agency if he's turning down a uh, full-time position. And uh, Chief Sarkos assured me that uh, it was their loss in our game. And so with that being said, I think that shows um, commitment by someone who wants to be here at EHT. Uh, number two, he's born and raised here in EHT. Is it correct? You went to high school. That's right. All right. All right. You weren't. All right. You know what? You're done. You didn't. Wait. <laughs> um, and the other thing is uh, he's focused. So the other reason, one of his, the reasons, uh, again, unless he lied to me, um, that he wants to get his education done as well. So knowing that he can work here and uh, complete his studies and get his four-year degree, college degree, and that's another reason um, he's coming here. So. And once again, we vetted him pretty well. He was interviewed twice. Uh, he, we normally don't do that, but there was a gap in the, uh, the time he applied and during his initial interview. So with that, we, the command staff brought him back in for an impromptu interview that he came within two hours notice, dressed in a suit. Again, those are things that we are looking for that we want here in our organization. People like that, professionalism, focus-driven, and uh, we expect uh, good things from Michael. And hopefully he can prove his worth and eventually become a full-time officer here at some point in Edgar Township. So congratulations, Michael. Chief, you sure you want to just stay for the rest of the <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got uh, ordinance number eight, Mr. Friedman. Thank you, Mayor. Ordinance number eight is an ordinance to amend chapter 87 entitled Cannabis of the Code of the Township Bay Harbor regarding the taxation, licensing, resolution of local support, and other provisions amended by law, including the uh, New Jersey Cannabis Regulatory Enforcement Assistance and Marketplace and Modernization Act. The purpose of this ordinance is to amend the existing licensing provisions concerning taxation of the cannabis businesses, compliance mechanisms, issuance of support letters and licenses, and to add prohibitions and requirements uh, regarding a community post agreement. Thank you. Is there anyone in the public that would like to discuss? Name and address to the record. Yes. Hello, my name is Kelly Gatto. Um, my address is uh, 20 Neptune Drive. It's a uh, Summers Point, but we a Cobra Township. Um, so I am the president and owner of, co-owner of Brutes Roots, a uh, cannabis dispensary located at 6206 Black Horse Pike, right here in a Harbor Township. Uh, Brutes Roots is a vertically integrated company, so we are permitted to cultivate, manufacture, and dispense cannabis as approved by the New Jersey Cannabis Regulatory Commission. So after a four-year wait with the state, we finally opened our dispensary here in each EHT last year in May to the medical community, and then September 1st, we expanded into the recreational market. Um, and first, I just want to say, our first year here, it's been a pleasure, um, so I thank EHT. It's, you, you guys have been great to deal with. Um, and as a business that has been operational and involved in the cannabis industry, I wanted to share some input based on our experiences that pertain to a few items that are being proposed in ordinance number eight. So in this proposed ordinance number eight, section two, chapter 87-7, entitled licenses of the code of the Township of A. Carver, specifically chapter 87-4D, subsections three and four, 
it states are hereby amended to delete the language for and replace it with six. So the new language that you are proposing, specifically item three, would now read as there shall be a maximum of six class five licenses issued exclusive of any vertically integrated medical marijuana facility. So there are currently two vertically integrated medical marijuana facilities that are operational in EHT, including us, which means you are proposing to allow a total of eight cannabis retail locations in this town. Our, very, our goal right now as a new business uh, and a locally owned mom and pop is to make sure we can sustain our business. By adding additional locations in this town, it will only make managing our business more challenging. We ask that you reconsider this increase of class five licenses and EHT as it is a recipe for failure. If you've already given out the current four available class five locations, in addition to the two vertically integrated operations, then please, just please give it some time just to see how it goes with what you've already issued. To date, there are over 120 permits that have been issued by the New Jersey Cannabis Regulatory Commission. There are many municipalities throughout New Jersey that have inundated their town with an abundance of retail licenses. We have been, we've actually been approached by numerous companies from some of these flooded municipalities asking if we would be interested in purchasing their business as they are already failing. We have also had numerous individuals apply for jobs at our dispensary because they are currently working at a dispensary in a town that has one on either every block or every few miles, and they too are failing. Some individuals even had job offers for pending dispensary openings, but have already been notified by the dispensary that they are not moving forward with their opening. The New Jersey CRC has given out thousands of conditional licenses and hundreds of annual licenses. I watch every CRC meeting, particularly the, the public comment portion, where there are individuals and families that go up there and share how they have lost their life savings during this venture. The CRC's current application process, unfortunately, gives many people false hope. And what you are proposing, unfortunately, will be no different. As a business in your town, I consider we are b business partners. If we are successful, that is more tax money for the town and more jobs. But if you flood the town with mul multiple locations, it only forces a survival of the fittest situation. So one other proposed item that I would like to address is section five, chapter 87-7D, entitled Collection of Cannabis Transfer and User Taxes of Code of the Township of Bay Harbor, specifically chapter 87-7D, item three. It's hereby to amend to the following. Well, rather than reading the entire section, if I'm reading this correctly, you are proposing to bring in a third party consultant to audit our business, and then we, the business, will have to reimburse the township within 60 days for this third-party consultant. Well, first, I, 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 I didn't know if there was an explanation for this amendment and if there are any other industries that the township brings in third-party auditors for. Um, as you are aware, we are uh, highly monitored by the New Jersey Cannabis Regulatory Commission. Our business is essentially an open book. We have no problem sharing any information that the township may request. We would like to suggest that if the township would like any business financial documents, that a formal request just be submitted and we, the business, have 30 days or some other acceptable timeline to, a, to supply this requested information. If the township insists on bringing in a third party auditor to place the cost of this service on the business is an unnecessary cost burden, we request that the township reconsider this amendment or at the very least, if you insist on placing the cost on us, place a cap on the cost of the third party auditor. Our experience in the cannabis industry is when a consultant sees cannabis, they automatically look to charge as much as, much as they can. So, thank you. Mr. Friedman, I'm gonna let you address some of this. Um, well, uh, my, I, I prefer to see the comments obviously uh, put in writing and sent to me so that we could consider that before the adoption. This is an introduction at this point. The adoption of it will occur a month from now. Uh, if there are amendments that we think that have hold some validity, uh, we'll consider those. Um, as far as I'm uh, aware, um, although your licensing from the state of New Jersey might be for a vertically integrated at present, you're only utilizing the 
uh, dispensary aspect, the retail aspect of it, and you're not doing the cultivation and manufacturing that you mentioned, that's something to come to the future? That's in another town. Another town? Yes, our cultivation and manufacturing facilities in Winslow Township. Okay, and I, uh, so in other words, in Egg Harbor Township, your operation is going to be limited to the dispensary aspect? Correct, we do our retail operations here, yes. Oh, this is the public hearing? Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> The, uh, so as far as the uh, amount of licenses, the township felt that it was incumbent upon us to allow additional licenses up to a certain amount of licenses for purposes of meeting the demand that is, uh, that is out there. We don't know exactly what the demand is yet right. because we are still waiting for another four or five dispensaries to come through the process and ultimately uh, seek licensure from the state, from the township, in order to commence operations. So it remains to be seen as to all the fears that you might have about competition, uh, you know, being a burden on your business or not, is an open question. There are some municipalities that have unlimited amount of dis uh, dis dispensaries. A Harbor Township felt it was in our best interest to have up to eight. So when you're talking about uh, uh, excuse me, up to six. So when you're talking about you being a vertically integrated, you're not vertically integrated in a Harbor Township. So it's not. Oh, the okay, so we're not counted as the That's one correct. of. Okay, so then we're one of the four. That's correct. Okay. So in that respect, you'll have less competition than you fear. Um, and in terms of the uh, having an independent audit done, uh, what we've found so far with the uh, um, the submissions that have been made by the existing facilities that are open, such as yourself, as well as uh, uh, the acreage holdings, uh, those uh, submissions have not been in keeping with what our ordinances call for so far, and we're looking to tighten that up. We're looking for certified financial statements to come on a quarterly basis from each one of the businesses that was in our original or ordinance we're looking to tighten that up and collect all the tax dollars and tax revenue that the township may be entitled to. So I could understand your concern about keeping the cost down to having an independent audit, but it would be mm, less than prudent for the township to just rely upon the numbers that are provided by your entity to us. If the situation, that's why we wanted to have a check by our own independent uh, auditor. If the situation of future changes that we could be assured that the information you're giving us is verified maybe we could eliminate the need for having it independently audited but for the time being we think that that's in the best interest of the township to require that okay and just so you're aware i when it was time for my first uh quarterly payment i did reach out to the administrator at that time and she uh, gave me instructions as what documentation to provide and it was reporting from my uh you know my uh, metric uh tracking system and okay. that's what i do provide i i don't just pull those numbers at, to date i paid we paid approximately eighty thousand dollars to a Carver township um and that's all been you know supplied with reporting when i sent that check in and were they were they accompanied by a certified order i was never told i needed to do a certified well, it was it was in our ordinance at the time you opened your doors okay so you, you were put on notice of that. Okay. All right. For now on, I'll do that. Um, and then, yes, I, I, I just ask um, if you do consider increasing the amount of licenses in, in the uh, town to please, I would just maybe look at what you already have issued, see if they get up and going, and engage it from there. Um, uh, that's fine. And, and, you know, this is a new industry. Uh, our ordinances have tried to evolve by keeping up with the circumstances as we deem them to be in the best interest of the township. I invite your comments. I would ask that your comments hopefully come in a little sooner. Uh, after we've introduced the ordinance rather than here on the cusp of uh, accept, uh, of, of uh, adopting the ordinance, it would probably be to the benefit of both of us to know that in advance. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on ordinance number eight? Seeing none, can I have a motion to close the public portion? So moved. Can I have a second, please? Second. Roll call. Gutierrez? The closure, yes. Ellis? Yes. Hodson? Yes. Falls? Yes. And Fromer? Yes. Can I have a motion to adopt ordinance number eight? So move. And second? This is for introduction only? No. This, this is, is to adopt. Option. Well, we're going to listen to uh, 
Was she going to submit something to Mr. Friedman about her concerns? Or? I thought we were at just the introduction stage. You are at the adoption or at stage. We're at the adoption stage. If you have concerns about the. Well, the I think she brings up valid points, Mark. Okay. That maybe if they're formatted to you, you could look at it and see if it impacts our ordinance. I, I think I understand what the issues are. I, I'm not moved by it, but obviously, if you have additional concerns, that's your prerogative that's a, to do for so. Clarification: the class fives, we're only allowing six. Uh, the class fives. What is yeah. the? Uh, yes. We were going to allow five. We allowed six. Am I correct? Or, or am I? We went from four to six, correct. excluding the. Five. So we only added two more. Right, right, uh, and that's what the you know, the concern that was raised is that you're actually adding three more, but you're not really because no. they're not vertically integrated, so they would be excluded. So, so we're, we're class five, six, not eight. That's correct. Six, yeah. Well, I made a motion to uh, adopt. Yep. Have a second. Your question, Paul. No, I just, I just think she, look, this is all foreign to me, certainly, and everybody else. I just want to make sure she had valid points. She's in the industry that if Mark thinks it's worth looking at to look into what her valid points were. Mark, what's um, your thoughts? This is, like I say, it's brand new. We had no direction from the state. This was dumped no. on us, and we tried to do the best we can to make sure it worked. <clears throat> well, I, I'm not sure I understand what's, I mean, the young lady had her, she made her cases, and one case was about our independent orders. I, I, we definitely need an independent order. I, I wouldn't think this committee would want to get rid of independent order. I mean, we can maybe in the future to see how this stuff goes, but by her own admission, and no disrespect, she said, I didn't know I had to send certified letters. Or certified, uh, you know. So I don't, I, I think we spent a lot of time on this ordinance. This was a strong, solid ordinance. Uh, I, for one, am not of the opinion of getting rid of an independent auditor for these cannabis uh, businesses. Not yet, anyway. I mean, let's do it for a few years to see if everything's as it should be, which I hope it is. I don't know, uh, getting rid of that, how in the world would we um, know what's going on? Mark, do you see any value in postponing this? Uh, I don't. I don't. I gave my reasons why uh, the ordinance, uh, ordinance revisions were appropriate, uh, based upon the number of licenses. Uh, and I've addressed that this evening, as well as the uh, independent auditor to verify the books for the benefit of the township and the taxpayers. So uh, there's nothing. <coughs> there's nothing I, I think that I need to see. Obviously, the governing body may want to look at it deeper. If that's the case, then that's your prerogative to do so. One of the things she brought up was the price on that? Do we have any idea what kind of price she'd be paying for the audit? Uh, I don't. Uh, it would be essentially be taking the uh, facts and figures that they give us as far as their sales are concerned, to have them reviewed by an independent sure. auditor of the township selection, and the township, uh, you know, how long that auditing process takes and gives us a report to say the numbers are verified. I, I, you know, I would say that it's something probably under somewhere between five and 10 hours worth of a professional's time to do that. I, I too would like to postpone it to have clear understanding of it. Okay. Then you would be table, then your prerogative is to table the, you know, like the chef to get to a, a motion to table. What I would like to know is what, other than the independent auditor, I don't see any other issue to table it. I mean, the, the, well, I mean, what it, what it, that, that's certainly the prior of the governing body. Yes, the effect of doing that is going to delay the uh, township's ability to verify and collect the tax dollars that's entitled to. That's what it's going to do. That'll think, I think that will be the net effect. Well, I have a motion for adoption. Do we have a second on the motion? Mr. Falls has a question. I, I have a question for her. Ms. Gannon, would you try a couple are you satisfied with us getting back to you with the audit first? I mean, I would. What are you actually looking for? I mean, we if if you insist on doing that and putting the cost on to us, um, if there can be a cap put in place, um, I understand you have a 
an idea of what it might run or how many hours. Uh, again, it's a new industry. It's something new that this auditor may not have dealt with or what have you. Um, so I think that's really hard to predict. Um, and it's just very open-ended. Um, again, we're a new business. And to have some of these costs, I'm not against if you, again, if you have to insist on having an auditor, that's fine. Um, I just wish if you could put a, a you know, a cap on that. Um, and then again, with the, the increase in the number of the, the licenses, I just feel that's a, a mistake at this stage right now. Um, again, seeing some neighboring towns, if you just look around at some neighboring towns, they're flooding licenses and, and it's, it's not, it's just not working. Kelly, we originally had five, we went to six. That's all we did. We had five retail licenses, your retail, retail license. We then went to six. That's all we did. So now it'll be seven if you're no, going to give out no, six no, and then the botanist. It'll be six. Well, there's the, no, the, you're correct to point out. There is the, there is the number of licenses plus the plus vertically plus integrated. Plus one. And yeah. Right. So it'll be six. So it'll be total of seven retail. But you're, you're class five. We're only having six class fives, am I correct? The botanist has a, a class five as well. I have a class five and a, a medical ATC, a medical and recreational. So I am I am considered an uh, alternative treatment center. I would suspect that the cost of the uh, of the audit would be the same cost that you have to pay for your lawyer to do the same thing to your books that we're requesting. So I'm not sure if you've done that before, but if you have, then you have an idea of what the cost would be. If you want to share that, that's completely I'm, No, I mean, I'm open to if we can put a cap in place. I mean, that, oh, excuse me. What I try to do with each new business to come in town, I try to personally go there, see how they're doing, and welcome them into our town and thank them. I personally went to a place on uh, Black Horse Pike, and I didn't really see the numbers like I saw in other towns. And it wasn't the numbers I would think, you know, people would be kicking down the door. So. That's why I said I want to look into it more, you know, because I personally went over there and and watched the operations and met some of the workers, and you know I don't really didn't see the numbers like I see in other town, right there. So, Miss Gatto, um, you're saying that we propose a cap, and then anything over the cap, our taxpayers would have to pay would come to our budget. I don't think that's fair, no disrespect. Um, I, I stand by trying to get this adopted tonight. Uh, do think that you'll get an audit, you'll have, we'll have an independent auditor, and in a year or two, we can revisit it if it's cost prohibitive or maybe if it's not necessary. That's where I stand on it. I, I do believe that this ordinance, a lot of work was put into this ordinance. No, I'm sure. I don't I don't think necessarily. <laughs> Not that I'm discounting you, but I, I think that some of it is on, um, is more fear than anything else. So. I just being in the cannabis industry, you ask for a quote from you know this type of vendor. If it's a regular retail vendor, it's X amount. If they hear cannabis, it's X amount, and it, and it skyrockets. They gouge the prices. So that's my only fear as well. well uh, no, I can assure you on that that the independent auditor that would look at this their prices will be fair because we know what those prices should be. Right. I can, we can guarantee you that. Right. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you, and I think we all feel the same way, the state entered this industry without rules. Right. And they're making them up as they go. And <laughs> I know 10 it. 10 years are gonna change everything they have in place right now. Mm -hmm. Most likely because some things are working, some things aren't, and you're right. You go into Atlantic City, they have them all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's, there's neighborhood issues, there's all the issues that go with it that all the municipalities have to deal with. So our concern here in town was keeping it into a limited location, which is primarily the Black Horse Pike or an industrial zone. And we're limiting the amount of licenses that we will give. And for us to add another license, we're gonna to have to go through this whole process all over again, just to add one more, if we wanna add one more. And you will be, absolutely, we can let you know if there's anybody else that wants to come in. But we can absolutely let you know that. But I think in regards to the ordinance, I think it is fair. I think uh, Mr. Friedman worked on it for quite a while. And I think there's a lot of discussion that went back and forth. Um, and it is a new industry. And we're trying not to make mistakes. Right. what we're trying. That's why we're being right. careful. Okay. I'm just fearful that the increasing is really going to be a mistake. This, 
if six or and then seven be in the town. How many? What have we got? Forty. 40,000 people? Almost 50. Almost 50. And they say an average, if you look it up, they say an average th per 30,000 people should be one dispensary. Like that's like on average. And that's, I so, think the issue yeah. on that is really at the state. Right. No, oh, and I agree. The Listen, I. They finally are giving out licenses. Oh, I know. Now. And, you know, the thing that, that concerns us is applicants are going with good faith to towns to open a dispensary of the business, whatever class it is. Right. And then. Yeah, there's a lot of dollars. As you know, there's a lot of dollars involved in yeah. opening a business. And we're trying to make sure that businesses that have already started in the process, you know, are covered. And then anybody else coming in after that has to wait a turn. So that's really where we are right now with this. I mean, are any of the others that are already given out, are they projected to open anytime soon? I mean, I like, I feel like it should see how that goes. One. I think there's one, but it's still in the construction phase, but it's has the entire process complete all the way to the mercantile license, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, there's one. Just one. That would be the third. And there's a, the fourth one that's not to the mercantile license yet. I don't know where they're at in the construction of the business. Okay. I'm just, just wanted to share my concerns. So. Are you okay if we can visit this in a year? I, yeah, I mean, I just, I, I will keep, we will absolutely. Do yeah, no, I have no problem. If you have to audit, that's, we're open book. I mean, you, if uh, your CFO, anybody wants to email me for anything, I'll give it to all you. All of our business <laughs> were like you. We'd be very happy. Yeah, no, I mean, the state has access to all of my, my POS system, my metric system, everything. So it's, it's monitored constantly so I'm not trying to hide it it's just a matter of open and we're a new business I know that could be costly and that's all I'm just just trying to be if I could find a, a potential compromise here an amendment of the ordinance which probably would not be substantial uh, and that is to make it discretionary as to whether or not we wish to have the audit done by an independent auditor as opposed to a mandatory uh, the only thing I would add to that is this suggestion the suggestion of, uh, of having the independent audit came from the cannabis consultant that we have conferred with in order to put this into the ordinance. Uh, that's a person that obviously has consulted with 20 plus other municipalities throughout the state and made that recommendation. That's not something that he, I came he is, with. And just for clarification for the citizens, he's an expert at what he's done. We brought him in and we had to pay him for his consulting fees. And these are some of the recommendations he, did, recommendations he put in. That's correct. Yes, because it's it's fair that we, not us five, but the fifty thousand citizens who we represent, everything is done to the best of their ability. And I mean, I, I get it. People read and scattered don't misunderstand me, but I know you had mentioned earlier in your in your uh, summation that you, you you didn't know, and, and you mentioned something about. You had to submit initially in our initial ordinances. You had to submit some uh, documents, financial statements, and you had failed to do so. You didn't know that they were in the order. I was going off of the uh, instructions of the administrator at that time. I had reached out to her and I said, "I know my first quarter is due. Please let me know what I need to submit." She told me what to submit, and I followed her instructions. Yes. Because it is in our original order. Oh, I, again, I just was getting instructions from her at that moment in time. It was my first payment due. So I just provided exactly what she told me to send. <laughs> so. Do you think it would be proper to put in amendments that we will look at the audit cost as it goes on? And if it becomes real unrealistic, which New Jersey is good at doing, okay, we would look at, it, at the cost. Because again, it's another tax on a bill, on an owner. Uh, it has a business, forget the, what, what the business is in our township. Um, yeah, I mean, just covering the whole thing. Uh, the ordinance prior to this amendment being uh, brought forth uh, basically said each uh, year before February 1st, a financial report from an independent accountant certifying their revenue shall be provided to the chief financial officer. So, you know, the, the concern of the consultant was, well, they're the ones, the business is the one who's picking out the chief financial, is picking out the uh, independent accountants. So are they really independent? Uh, they're the ones that are selecting them. 
uh, okay, it's not an in-house person, it's an outhouse uh, person, it's an outhouse a financial uh, auditor. They're the ones that come up with a report. When we see the report, are we just supposed to accept the report sight on scene? The only thing I'd say about that, Mark, is any licensed professional, if it has to, if they're going to have to be licensed professional. Their license is on the line. That's true. With everything that they should have. That's true. And the thing is this, you know, similar to even a, a zoning planning board application, there's a there's uh, documents that are submitted by professionals for the applicant mm -hmm. that are then reviewed by our professionals. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we don't have in this cannabis industry how who who do we ask to uh, review those uh, those reports? That's why there was the need to have the ability to send to our own person that we selected rather than, a, rather than a CFO just accepting a signature and a certification sight on scene as being accurate. I mean, we did have those discussions as a, as a, as a, as a group and, and those things were put in here in all of the discussions that form like this. So, I mean, from the recommendations from the uh, consultant and all the discussions amongst ourselves and things of that nature. So. Yeah, I mean, this wasn't pulled out of thin air. No, 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 no. Just thought consideration, but ultimately the decisions the governing bodies as a whole as to whether or not you want to adopt the ordinance or second the motion was made, or you don't and want to table it for, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen between now and the next time it comes up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, because you don't recommend any change to it. I don't. So. I don't need to know anything else. I mean, you might not, you might not agree, though. I mean, that, that's that's what I'm saying. But these understand. Mr. Dina Tal, can you please come up and name an address for the record? How are you doing? Jimmy Dina Tal. He can't hear. What's that? Address, she said. Oh, uh, 20 Neptune Drive, um, in Corbett Township. You have the CRC has a tax that we have to pay. <laughs> Your 2% host fee is on the gross. We pay another 7% to the state of New Jersey, okay? So there is no funny stuff going on. It would be tax evasion for us if we weren't paying the state tax, no different than a Quabber Township tax, okay? Um, my only recommendation to any of would be is that we pay it, uh, um, last month, this month. Don't do it quarterly. Because if you're going to have these people coming in here that aren't going to make it, and you're going to be chasing around. Atlantic City approved 25 dispensaries, okay? They're not going to make it. There's not enough customers for this. You still have all these smoke shops that are selling THC. The police department can't do anything about it. Nobody's doing anything about it. Now all your liquor stores are selling THC infused alcohol. Okay? It's cannabis. All right? The gummies that they're selling at these vape shops, the gas stations, I mean, you, you have 20 of them in, in Ake Harbor Township. Okay? And they're selling it. They're selling the same stuff we are. They're not policing. You're not asking for a 2% host fee. They're not licensed by the state. They're not a third party testing firm testing their products. Okay, because they have a skew on there that says, oh, it's this, Delta 8, Delta 10. It's, it's, it's cannabis. I, I per but, perfectly recognize the pressures uh, uh, that you are in, uh, facing. As a no, it's not us. It, it's it's, it should be used, too. I mean, we're paying it. Everybody else should pay it. We're, we're, we obviously embrace and are in favor of having cannabis businesses in the township. It's just that we want to make sure that uh, when we... When this committee approved having those type of businesses in these townships, uh, in our township, that we're collecting the tax revenue to which we are entitled. And uh, otherwise, we might not have approved it, this governing body, from all I know. So uh, if we're really talking about the cost that it's going to be for an independent auditor to look at certified reports, I don't think we're... In spite of all the other taxations that you're getting in from left and right, I don't think you're talking about a large monetary figure. That's my... Yeah, I, I really so. don't. Well said. Share half of it. You should benefit it. I'm sorry, yeah. share half of what? Whatever the cost of the auditors. Listen, auditors are like engineers and everybody else. 
You brought up, oh, if you're gonna do something in the planning board, yep, I gotta hire my attorney, I'm hiring my engineer, I'm hiring my... Uh, uh, Welcome to New Jersey. No, I, listen, but we all do it. But then we're paying, it's, it's not like you guys are paying for your uh, yeah. independent attorney, engineer, we're paying for that as a developer, okay? So, I mean, you're getting this double hoops, no and, and I get that, but I think there has to be a, um, you know, you got skin in the game, uh, you know, share the cost maybe. I don't know if she would approve that, but it's just an idea. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Everybody Thank good? You. Sit down. Everybody good. All right. Procedurally, there's a motion on the floor. I have a motion to approve. Ordinance. Ordinance number eight. We have a motion on the floor. Can I have a second? I have a second. We have a second. Can I have a roll call, please? Figaro? Yes. Ellis? Abstain. Hudson? You abstain? Yeah. Abstain. False? Yes. And Fomer? Yes. Ordinance number nine, Mr. Friedman. Thank you, Mayor. Ordinance number nine is an ordinance to amend Chapter 86 of the Township Code entitled Campgrounds Private. The purpose of this ordinance is to provide sanitary standards and occupancy requirements to protect the public health at campgrounds as a result of the sunsetting provisions of New Jersey um, Administrative Code 8 colon 22 uh, campground regulations. Um, before proceeding, Mayor, uh, I know that there was a, a discussion that was had and communication concerning a potential uh, amendment to this, um, and specifically, it would be a require a motion uh, by the uh, governing body here, uh, and the passage of the motion is to add the following on 86 dash, uh, chapter 86 dash 3, oh. adding. Uh, under administration. To Mark, just give me a minute to we get to it. So 86 staff under administration. Under administration, 86 3 administration, it would be adding a new section, which would be D. Uh, and this really just takes a definition uh, that all occupants of a camping, camping unit, dwelling, or site who cannot use the site as a permanent residence or domicile, irrespective of the length of stay, are deemed transient guests which does not establish a landlord-tenant relationship. Um, so that is an accepted definition of the campers being transient guests as opposed to tenants at the, so at, at the campground. And that is a, a, an amendment that I think is appropriate and one because it is a accepted definition would not uh, be a substantial change to the ordinance as presented. And that's primarily for its changing that would be the terminology adding a section of D. the person. That's right. To clarify what the what that occupant is. They're a transient guest, they're not a tenant. And that's on the campground. And Six. that doesn't change any of their rights or anything within the campground law. Uh it does no, it's it, it is actually consistent with the campground law. That that they're campers, they're not considered tenants. That's eighty six dash three what? D? Uh, adding D. Okay. Mr. Free. Can we read that again since we, we are just finding this out? Could you possibly read that first one again? Certainly. Uh, that, uh, and I believe that you're with uh, Sleepy Hollow? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi. Um, all occupants of a camping unit, dwelling, or site who, are, who, who cannot use the site as a permanent residence or domicile irrespective of the length of stay, are deemed transient guests, which does not establish a landlord-tenant relationship. I heard that part. I think the part that you're changing, like the part right before that you said you're adding to it, what part did it come from? The, the adding is that entire yeah. section of what I just read. Ma'am, can you come on up to the microphone? Sorry, I'm not understanding where it's added to. So I would like you to read where it was added to. Uh, in our ordinance, it would be chapter 86-3. That's what I would like read. <laughs> which is the administration aspect of it. Okay. And in, in, in the administration aspect, in, in the administration section, 
we think that it's appropriate to add that definition. Okay. Can we just get your name and address yes. for the record? Yes, my name is Lynn Prescott, 134 Bevis Melrod. Uh, having been a long-term uh, uh, owner uh, and uh, operator in this field is that a absolutely we already have that in our rules in your rules and regulations in our our personal regulations and yes. on our contract we already have it um so yes that is but because we had not heard that i wanted to know where it was coming from because gotcha. administration didn't sound like administration sounds more like you guys not our end so yeah. Um, That's why I wanted it explained about it. Well, we're looking to codify that definition yes. that is included in your Especially leases. with the history, with the past campgrounds, I definitely yes. think it's needed. In okay. There. Thank you. Just for the record, yes. you run a tremendous, fabulous business. Thank you. I never had an issue at all. I appreciate that. We, we try to follow can. everything, you know, to the T, so I appreciate hearing that. And the swimming pool is cold water. <laughs> yes, it is. It's spring fed, so it's very cold. I know. Oh, that is cold. That is cold. Thank you. All right. So since we're amending it, then we have to reintroduce it. Well, we actually just opened it. Okay. You want to amend it anyway? Well, we have to open it public. Mark, do you want to add anything else before we open it to the public? Um, well, it depends upon whether or not the governing body wants to uh, pass that motion to amend. We can pass the motion to amend. We don't have to reintroduce. That's correct. Okay. Okay. All right. So before us right now, we have one, a motion to amend ordinance number nine. Can I have a motion? So move. I have a second. Second. Right. Okay. Roll call, please. <clears throat> Kifaro. Yes. Ellis. No. Hudson. Yes. Paul. Yes. And Prover. Yes. Okay, so now I'm going to open this up to the public. If there's anyone else that would like to speak on ordinance number nine. Seeing none, can I have a motion to close the public comment? Sure. I'll second it. Roll call. Kifaro? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Hopson? Yes. Falls? Yes. And Framer? Yes. Can I have a motion to adopt ordinance number nine as amended? So moved. Roll call, please. Kifaro? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Hopson? Yes. Falls? Yes. And Framer? Yes. Ordinance number 11, Mr. Freeman. Ordinance introduction. Thank you, Mayor. Ordinance number 11 is an, or, an ordinance to amend Chapter 6 of the Code of Township of Vague Harbor entitled Administration of Government, uh, specifically Section 6-18 Fees. The purpose of this ordinance is to bring uh, the ambulance billing fee schedule in line with allowable amounts being reimbursed for services rendered. A public hearing on Ordinance 11 will be held on May 22nd, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Thank you. Can I have a motion to introduce Ordinance Number 11? I'll, I'll make a motion for introduction. Can I have a second, please? Second. Roll call. Caffaro? Yes, for Ellis. introduction. Yes. Um, Ellis? Yes. Hudson? Yes. Falls? Yes. And from Yes, ordinance number 12, Mr. Friedman. Ordinance number 12 is an ordinance appropriating $5 million and authorizing the issuance of $4,750,000 in bonds or notes of the township for various improvements or purposes authorized to be undertaken by the Township of A. Carver. The purpose of this ordinance is to appropriate and authorize the issuance of bonds or notes in the amounts contained within the ordinance for the acquisition of various improvements and purposes. Thank you. Can I have a motion to introduce the um, ordinance? Okay. If I may, a public hearing on Ordinance 12 of 2024 will be held on May 22nd, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a motion to introduce Ordinance Number 12? I'll make a motion. Okay. Roll call. Caffaro? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Hodson? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Freeman? Yes. Ordinance 13, Mr. Friedman. Thank you, Mayor. And Ordinance 13 is an ordinance to amend Chapter 118 of the Code of Township Vic Harbor entitled Garbage, Rubbish, Refuse, and Recycling specifically Article 4, composting. The purpose of this ordinance is to amend the fee schedule specific to the loading of screened and unscreened composting material. A public hearing on Ordinance 13 will be held on May 22nd, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. I have a motion to introduce Ordinance Number 13. Thank you. Well, second in there. Roll call, please. Caffaro? Yes. Ellis? Yeah. Hudson? Yes. Falls? Yes. And Bremer? Yes. General public discussion. Chief, was there anything else that you would like to say this evening? No? No, I mean, back for uh, 
Okay, I figured before you, we got into the public comment. I'll call you, yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Is there anyone in the public that would like to please come forward? State your name and address for the record. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jean Marie Drew. I reside at 11 Lemwood Court here in EHT. I'm here tonight as a resident and a taxpayer to comment on your consideration of Resolution 222. Please note that I am not opposed to the consideration of certain lands as areas in need of redevelopment. Rather, I request that you consider my opposition to any current and future redesignated EHT land being made vulnerable to the placement of wind turbine substations. Please note that during the back and forth on the cannabis topic, Mr. Friedman, who I, I really respect the way you handle everything, thank you, um, you stated that the businesses may not have been given consideration had it not been for tax revenue. I ask that you please not place this as a priority when companies like All Shores Offshore Wind come to you to build the substations needed to operate their wind turbines um, that are being proposed to be constructed in the ocean. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the governing body? Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Sherry Lillianfeld, and um, I'm actually a resident of Margate. Am I allowed to speak to you? Yes. OK. My address is uh, 7809 Wellington Avenue, Margate. Um, following up on Jean Marie's comments related to the redevelopment of this land for offshore winds, and obviously you're very concerned about tax revenue and your residents, and I'm assuming the safety of your residents. And I was here March 20th, and you remember, and we did have a Jonah Smith followed up with some supplemental information. We went to you, um, Mayor Frommer, and I'm assuming everyone got it and read it. I just want to read to you a couple of statistics that you need to think about when you're, um, if you consider redevelopment redeveloping this land for an offshore wind purpose. Um, and I mentioned this the last time. So this substation doesn't stand on its own. High voltage cables will come in from the ocean under the roads, through homes, through neighborhoods, and adversely impact residents of EHT. And there will be loss of um, property values, which means loss of taxes. Um, but the biggest thing with the offshore wind, how it's gonna affect Atlanta County as a whole, and we have gone to the county on this, is um, tourism revenue losses, job losses, tax losses. If this project happens, it's gonna adversely affect everyone in this county in a big way. Um, we estimated First of all, 50% of renters that have been surveyed said they will not come back and enjoy our beaches. Um, tourism's gonna suffer. Local businesses are gonna suffer. All these new cannabis dispensaries, people aren't gonna come here and enjoy their cannabis and the area. Um, we estimated that there'll be about 12,700 job losses in the area. 1.3 to 1.9 billion dollars in annual tourist spending loss, and 142 to 206 million government annual tax revenue losses. That doesn't include casino revenue losses. I mean, I don't have to tell you, I don't wanna read a bunch of statistics. You know what our county is based on. A lot of people that live in EHT support the tourism industry. Businesses support it. It's going, to affect, it's going to affect everyone, including the people of EHT, and you also need to think about health impacts. So when you look at redevelopment of this site, um, you really need to think about um, 
the health, welfare, safety of everybody. Um, it's not just like you're going to put a substation there. There's massive cables that have to get to the substation. So it's not just this site. So that's all I'm saying. Don't just look at the site, look at the big picture and, and what you're going to put there and how it's going to affect everything in its path to get there. So that's it. Thank, Thank you. you. I had one question. Yes. The numbers you gave us, where are you getting them from? So uh, Suzanne Moore, she, she is, she, well, she's, I'm not allowed to say what group that I work with. <laughs> I will send it to you. I will send the data where it came from. But um, we've done studies on impacts, like, for example, COVID, like when COVID happened and how it impacted businesses. And then this will be another major impact to the area. And she used to be um, a business manager for a school district. So she's very good at looking at numbers. And that's, these are from her, but I could send them to you. Just for the record, could you send them? You have my, you have my email. Yes. You can send them to me and I'll send them. Yes, I, I will send you, she, she did, it's just a three page study. It has a lot of graph. I could give you this, but this isn't, actually we have a more complete one. But I'll send you the full report because she actually updated it from there. Sure, notwithstanding, um, this mm -hmm. isn't anything to do. I'm going to send it to you. I'm sorry, I'm going to send it. I'll just, uh, yes. just one thing, from my understanding, and, and most of your argument has nothing to do with today's resolution in, in a general sense. However, these cables are not going through residential areas if and when they ever get here. They go down the highways. And down the roads. They're I mean, going I just, down Big Drive. <laughs> you know, you can't say for sure where the cables are going to go, and I'm going to tell you why. There's geotechnical studies that they do, and if they find a big, for lack of a better word, a big rock that they can't build, dig their huge six foot trenches to get the cables through, they will find other paths. There's a whole lot of geotechnical studies that have to go on to see where these cables are gonna go. So you can't say they're not gonna go there. They're very good at having a graph with a bunch of little red lines going down the Black Horse Pike, and they're saying, this is where it's gonna go. Not only that, even if it's going down the Black Horse Pike, you're telling me there's no residential neighborhoods anywhere near the Black Horse Pike? Think of it like a big, power cable, you know, in the air. You, how close do you want to be to that? And these are only going to be six feet under. So six feet under and there are EMF, um, there's EMF radiation that comes out of it. So don't let them tell you and show you this little drawing and this is where it's going. Everything they have said has changed and it's always much worse than what they said. The sound, just to give you an example, oh, when we're doing our sonar, we're doing this level of sound and it's not affecting the whales. When we go out, when they go out and test it, it's much higher than what they say. Everything that they have promised has been underestimated. So please don't assume these nice little red lines. It's just gonna go under the highway. Thank you. <laughs> I can tell you, sorry. I had said this before and I mean this. Um, this resolution here is taking two prop parcels that the gentleman or their company already owns and putting it in that area. Your questions are going to go to the planning board. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. This is where the meets and you know once they if they get the redevelopment plan to go through and it, I'm messing the term up again. There's two two factors of redevelopment. There's an in need of redevelopment that comes first. The planning mm -hmm. board would say yay or nay on that. Once say they said yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, then the plan comes. And in the plan, and you can come to that first one. When we were looking for it. We were looking for that planning board meeting, meeting and then we, we saw this. Had it yet. Yes. So, okay. Um, but so there'll be two, two bites of the, well, there might only be one bite if they say no at the planning board level. So and that's just for, just for the in need designation. Mm -hmm. So once it gets through that, then the plan, if say it says yes, the next step up is a plan where you would see, and they have to tell us exactly everything. And every single question that everybody in here has 
can be asked and it's, it's got to be answered. We appreciate that. We've been looking for it's that not planning up. board meeting. It's not up yet. <laughs> but, but what you're explaining, and for the average person, mm -hmm. high tension lines go all through our community. That's going through the ground now. So high tension lines are going 50 feet in the air. They're now on the ground, I don't know how deep. Six and feet. That's a whole, di that's a whole different ball game. Mm -hmm. They're still generating whatever the high tension lines though through the ground. But how close are you to those high tension lines? Nobody wants to be. Exactly, and what's going to happen to the, the property? Is, yeah, I understand it. And that's these these people smarter than me can tell you what it does versus what it is in the air at fifty or hundred feet versus six feet in the ground. Well, what's interesting is if you read the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management study and their reports, all the the adverse effects are all in there. Nobody reads them, like one of the things we suggested to the county is like you should really have a special committee that takes the time to look at this because it's all there and guess what happens because it's all there when you have all these problems they're going to say it was in our report you know how the game is played it was there we warned you we told you about this we said it could be a problem it's all there now me and some other of my colleagues we've taken the time to read it it's a lot and Suzanne Moore who I told you about who put that together she has read she spent a lot of time putting that together and I will get that information to you because I'm in the same boat I, I want to read everything I love that good and that's great and I hope you read the stuff Jonah um, sent but my understanding from the March 20th meeting though was Atlantic Shores was giving you guys money to do this study to redevelop this land and now it's going to be paid for by the city is that my understanding so what is the resolution can you can you explain the resolution resolutions to incorporate the two parcels that are owned by the same owner and are contiguous to the same owner so uh, it's appropriate that they should be incorporated in the part of redevelopment plan because they were left out uh, the other part of it is that the township will be uh, incurring a cost for its planner to write the report or to amend the report that it presently, presently has in place to determine whether or not it's appropriate to add those particular parcels to it. And that's our, at our cost as opposed to at their cost. And that's the difference between what we that's talked the, about, the that now it's on your cost and your planner is going to be that's correct. looking at the redevelopment. That's correct. Okay. So the planning board is definitely where you need to go. What's the date on that? We don't have that date yet. We've been looking. It, 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 <laughs> as soon as it, it'll be up as soon as we know. So is it not on the planning board now because they wanted to do this resolution to change? Like No, there's a process and it actually depends on what's the workload that they have in front of them. So they already have a plan then? Are you saying not that you know? Saying. Okay. For the hearing before the zone, before the planning board, the subject matter is not going to be what the end use is going to be. It's just whether or not these two additional parcels should be put inside the plan or not. Let's say put inside the plan, we're talking about the Cardiff plan, which is comprised of hundreds of parcels. So it's going to say whether it could be like an industrial use or like that? Like, it, uh, is so that. It's not really saying what the end use is going to be, it's whether or not that land should be designated as being part of uh, property that's in need of redevelopment. And there are certain criteria and standards for doing that. Okay. Well, if not for anything, I got an opportunity to. Education. Ed education, yes, thank you. And I will send you a follow up email. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to well, address uh, us, us too? But if you want to go first, all right. I'm not going to be long at all. My name is Alan Quirk, 1625 Old Egg Harbor Road, and also a member of the Board of Trustees of Oxford Village Condominium Association, which is 168 units, directly borders the entire site of what you're proposing. Just need to move this for a second. Oh, where's my right hand? Try not to drop this. Okay. So, <clears throat> a couple things. One, and I understand that you want what the 
resolution is about. Currently, the zoning of that, and this is just something I obtained from Ag Harbor Township, dated March 25th of this year, so it's pretty recent, uh, chapter 225 on the zoning, that talks about the zoning of that site and what is the permitted use and its own professional office district that which site are we talking about? There's there's the a couple sites in question. The, the two parcels. The two parcels that, that, that you're might discussing. Be considered as part of that. Correct. Okay. So that would so currently, both of those are the permitted principal uses of those two sites are from the township offices for business, professional, and government purposes, administrative offices of commercial and industrial partnerships, companies, or corporations provided that the following requirements are met. No sales of retail or wholesale nature shall be permitted on the premises. No warehousing or storage of materials or equipment including the storage of vehicles other than the incidental storage of office supplies or records shall be permitted on the premises. Wholesaling, warehousing, and distributing, excluding retail or wholesale sale of lumber, ice, coal, petroleum, quarried or mined material or similar bulk materials. Branch banks, including drive-in banking facilities, restaurants, not including fast food restaurants, indoor athletic and recreational facilities, personal wireless telecommunications facility not to exceed 120 feet in height. Permitted accessory uses shall be uses and buildings customary and incidental to the principal use or building recreational facilities, sorry, it's down key, and cafeterias provided for employees when integrated into a planned office development incidental to the primary office use. Sir, it might be better if you just tell us what part of that, instead of reading the whole. Okay, well, so that would require changing the entire zoning, as I understand it, unless I'm misunderstanding, the zoning and use for those two lots that is not permitted, not a permitted use for that. I understand it's in being put into the redevelopment site, but that would seem that the township, in order to do that, would have to change the permitted use that's always existed that's for those sites. That's of the area need of redevelopment at the planning board. This is all going to be right. cashed out at the planning board. Right, okay. Okay. And then also, I just wanted to mention for the record that the site where they mentioned that there wasn't a plan, they actually have had a plan. They may not have made it public going back two years. Uh, what is that? This is from Atlantic, uh, Atlantic Offshore Wind Proposed Offshore Facilities, Cardiff, of that particular site from November 2022, revised April 2023. Is that our plan? No, it was their plan of oh, the proposed. Plan. Yes. May I give a copy to the board? If you would like to, I have extra copy. Okay, right to the administrator, I think. You're the best okay. right In that. And what was the date on that plan? There are two dates, November 2022, revised April 2023. It's a large report. In there, you'll see what they are proposing, the use on page 37. shows some of the simulated uses, where some of the towers relating to that are larger than the buildings completely surrounding that site. So this would be something that would tower over the tree line that's being built there and the other issue is we don't know how many trees would be cleared or what's the permitted amount of trees that could be cleared in the township. Right now, our complex borders that and is developed to look at nature. And in doing this, another concern is if that is considered and developed, would that lead to the desecration of the wooded area there and not provide any open area, any land, and how does that affect the value? Our complex is 168 units. There are others, um, townhouses at Cambridge within 200 feet, Club at Tilton within 200 feet. Yes. And uh, that's a very valid question that I would ask our professionals mm -hmm. at the planning board and their professionals at the planning board. Okay. 100%. Right. Uh, because they're, they're going to be the neighbor to this proposed substation. So. I think and the that's the question that needs to be asked. And the report actually shows it much larger than people realize. Probably one of the largest this area has ever seen. And, and just size and mass, the height of it, um, which some of those towers look like they could be 40 or 50 feet tall. And 
there are 35 or 40 of those on that lot proposed. This is a gigantic complex. It looks like it would almost cover the entire area from Hinkston Avenue to Fire Road. Now, I understand they're preliminary and there may be changes, but there will be issues with noise. It does make noise ongoing. Plus, light pollution, if that's the correct term. I'm sure there's security lights from LED lighting. How does that affect the community of people that try to sleep at night around there when there's bright lights coming through? And I'm sure a lot of the trees will be cleared. And if they come in and say, well, we'll replace trees, but you're planting six or eight foot tall trees. Well, now, you know, I don't think anyone would like to live next to that. And in that report shows kind of disturbing when you look at see the size and magnitude of what they're trying to put in. And I, I don't think a lot of people realize or understand how large that site is. It's the first one they had proposed. And this one looks like the largest by far. Well, of I, that would, area. I reiterate what I've been saying yes. all along. And tonight's meeting is only on resolution right. 222 to consider yes. adding adding these to the area needs study yes. and that's all this is right and it's going to the planning board right okay so you know i'm going to tell you okay and i just want to put my concerns for the record yeah. and we'll no, be here are. for the planning board thank you. and thank you for and, the and it involves Absolutely. not just our community there are many other complexes it's in a densely populated area where you have london court one and two a lot of homes surrounding that that have no idea what is really what would look like or the impact of the values would people want to continue to live there as a result of that, good I wouldn't. All good points. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much for your time. Absolutely right. Thank you. And you're you Is there anyone else who would like to address? Yeah, Rich and then I'll, I'll and then whoever else. Good evening. Good evening. <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm I promise I won't laugh. <laughs> Anyhow, um, I'm here about. Uh, what is your name? Oh, uh, okay. I'm sorry, uh, Richard Barely, and uh, I own property with. Uh, yeah. uh, I own property with uh, my son at one your one. Address, your address, well, his our combined address is one 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 four Marlou. My home address is uh, uh, twenty two oh seven Grove Road in Northfield. Okay. So I'm here. Uh, I'm not going to reiterate all the uh, pluses and minuses of uh, of windmills. I'll state the fact that I'm opposed to windmills uh, adamantly uh, for personal reasons. And um, is the property? It, it's a little confusing if the property's in the PO one zone. Uh, or the RCD zone, but um, I'm not going to read through the zones in themselves. I didn't see like a substation as a permissible use. I know like everything that was brought up by Mr. Corrick uh, would be addressed at a, um, a planning board meeting. My uh, question is to the committee here is that if you vote tonight to not expand the Cardiff uh, redevelopment zone, would that prohibit it from being heard at the planning level and push it into a zoning board? I could explain. The process, the process is that this committee refers to the planning board for the planning board to consider whether or not those two lots should be included in the redevelopment plan. We're not make, this body is not making a decision beyond that. So when it goes to the planning board, they will rely upon a report that's prepared by its planner to determine whether or not those particular properties are in need of redevelopment and should be part of the plan. That's step one. Okay. So that's all the governing body is doing at this point by the adoption of this resolution. And quite frankly, it's really just cleaning up the prior resolution of 181 that was already passed a month ago or something like that. So um, that's that's step one. What actually is put on that property has to be the subject matter of a proposal and the subject matter of a redevelopment plan. Mm -hmm. The plan needs to be presented and vetted both by this governing body as well as the planning board, which will give an opportunity for the residents, neighbors, people who have any concerns about it to voice their opinion. And obviously your opinion is valued by the boards and the boards will weigh that in whether or not they make a recommendation that this redevelopment plan makes sense for a Carver Township or does not. 
I guess, uh, but what I'm saying is that, and, and what I'm in favor of uh, tonight is that you don't pass it because is that if you don't pass it, then, uh, and I'm no uh, land use lawyer, but I've been practicing real estate like land use for 40 years. So I've been to a couple of meetings uh, here and there, but uh, not to be sarcastic, but what I'm saying is that if it's a zoning issue, I think it would be a, a lot better of an opportunity uh, for the potential to be denied because it would have to, they would have to prove beneficial use or benefit to the community. Like if it's, for example, a D variance, which if it's not a permissible use right now in uh, the uh, either zone, because I think the property is in two different it appears it's in two different zones. So the current uh, zoning of the property is really irrelevant for what the task that's going to be is before the planning board to decide. This is vacant land. It's been vacant land for a long time. Uh, it's not been put to any use, and that is has to be the subject matter of the report as to whether or not it satisfies the criteria that it should be included in the plan. Well, would would this be? Um, heard by the planning board or the zoning board it's heard by the planning board to make a after they hear it uh, as to what whether or not the criteria have been met and then they make a recommendation to the governing body to either incorporate those pro parcels or not incorporate those parcels got it so what exactly the uh, discretion to go along with that recommendation or not go along with that recommendation so what effect would it have tonight if you denied like this uh, proposal 222? Two, two? Uh, then um, the effect of that would be that the, uh, uh, the, the original part of plan is not expanded to include these particular lots. Um, and well, that's correct. That's a good point. We have a prior resolution that's already been adopted by the governing body a month ago that basically referred it. Referred to pass it? It passed. The resolution passed. Oh, okay. I wasn't aware of that. What's that? Yeah, I wasn't aware of that. Um, I'm just trying to determine what the best plan of action is to uh, oppose it from a technical standpoint, because I could uh, go on for a couple of hours to uh, no, I know <laughs> to tell you why I, I'm against it altogether. But and that's another thing is that I um, what I may request or uh, I can I request is to table this so that we can bring in a couple of experts in May. So this is this is different. This is something that we really don't need experts on. It's either we're going to send it over to them and they're going to say yes or no. Right. That's all. That is literally all we're doing tonight. We've already passed a previous resolution to send it over to them. Got now it. we're just, if I'm correct on this, Mr. Friedman, that's all we're doing right now. Okay. This is, this is something that needs to go to the planning board. And you need to come to the planning board and... I thought I could just uh, affect you. I'm sorry. May I just what, 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 uh, <laughs> se uh, finish the sentence? Is I, I could have uh, helped to effectuate the blockage of the expansion of the uh, redevelopment zones because we I've been involved with selling properties that are in a redevelopment zone and it really helps to facilitate a town to approve something. So that's what I was just trying to do. So if I'm late. But in light of that. At the last meeting, when the previous resolution, oh, sure, it's G. Marie Drew, Lenwood Court. Um, it was explained, I was in the same exact position as you, and asked that it be tabled, the previous resolution. And it was explained to me by Mr. Friedman, and correct me, please, if I'm wrong, that had they tabled it, the company with interest would have gone to the state circumvented the committee and they would have ended up in our backyard doing accomplishing whatever they wanted to accomplish at least here the township has some control and we go through the stages that are laid out I don't want it. oh i don't either and that's the whole point we can't stop it here it's the next step correct okay thank you is there anyone else? Uh, just, just two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just be two minutes, really. We, I, I mean this respectfully. Thank you. My name's Virginia L. Halk. I live at 15 Gold Cove, Brigantine. I lived for 15 years at Lakeside. I loved it here. 
I also was born in Atlantic City, and I've gone to so many meetings, just like yours, and I don't know all the details of all the, the technical words, but I speak for myself for the love of this area. This uh, Atlantic City, the, they, they, the, and read the Bomber Report, because they tell you what the damage is going to be, and it's as black and white. The, these cables are going to be through two beaches, through part of Park Place, through a, a, chi, a, a school's playground, through the past the boat yard, the boathouse, across the inlet into Bader Field. This is uh, critical land. That they, these things are not that far because we have sand. Ocean City is the same way. I was there when they were going <clears> to <throat> dig up 35th Street. The people were standing in the streets crying. They were absolutely carted away like carcasses because they were saying, this is our backyard. Please, I'm begging you, read. I know it's the plan. I hear all that. But I'm just saying, if Atlantic Shores is paying for this study, don't you think it's a little slanted? How can they pay for something and expect a fair? I mean, if it's almost like I would say a bribe. That's a terrible word. I'm sorry. Cross it out. But honestly, it doesn't it sit well with me. And I'm an environmentalist for everything, for noise, sound, smell, light, and have the, the uh, opportunity to live in a place where you don't have, to, we don't want to live next to a transformer. If there's a transformer, we say, well, I don't want to buy that house, we have to move it. But we're putting them in the ground. It's so funny when they were doing it in the ground and 35th Street in Ocean City, there were signs all up in the signs because careful, high, Caution, ca electrical wires, caution, stay clear. But yet on the ground where we drive, right there is a tennis court. Please, I know we'll, we'll, we will go to the planning board and I thank you respectfully. I really thank mean you. it, thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Um. For the record, it's not going to be long David at all. Anderson. Okay, my name is Louise Rosanio and I live at the Ocean Club Condos in Atlantic City. And. I'm opposed to all this too because I'm trying to sell my place at, at the Ocean Club and I've been looking in this area and I love a Harder Township and I and I want I'm, I want to go from a condo to a house but it's deterring me to think that to come to a Harbor Township and if they're going to have this substation all this 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 stuff going on I don't even want to come here either it's like where are we supposed to go to get away from this insanity it, it's really not right and I'm, I'm opposed to it and, and it's personal to me because I live in oceanfront property, and they wanted to put them Atlantic shores and Orsted and all that. They wanted to put them wind turbines in the ocean, and and it's like not it's not it's not good. And the same thing here, and, and I hope that you you know like they said the planning board I will come to it. And I don't even and I live in Atlantic City, but I'm not for it. I don't they, they should not have anything to do with with any of the land here. If they want to you know if you just want to build condos, yeah fine. But you know, even if you give them a study, they're going to they're going to do what they want, and they're going to just destroy everything. That's, that's, that's I just wanted for the record. Thank and thank you for listening. Thank you. You're welcome. You. Anybody else? Can I motion to close the public portion? Roll call. Yes. Caffaro. Yes. Ellis. Yes. Hudson. Yes. Falls. Yes. 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 We have a resolution calendar. We already did two eleven. We appointed uh, Mr. Boyle. So it's 212 through and including 223. Can I have a motion, please? Lady Rector. Sorry. Roll call. Gifero? Yes. Ellis? Yeah. Hodson? Yes. Falls? Yes. And Farmer? Yes. Resolution, uh, should we have an add-on? I think we're going to hop there first. Um, yeah. Resolution 226, appointing Autumn Garcia Costa to serve as the Department of Police as a part-time communicator. Can I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Okay. Roll call, please, on 226. Caffaro? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Hodson? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Yes. Resolution. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. I want to, all I want is a nice little rancher house in Upper Township, please. Yeah. In Adelaide City. There's a realtor walking out the door with a couple of I have my, my, my Don't condo. Don't scream. Get one of them. So, we'll see. You have it. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. <coughs> we have resolution 224, the bill list. Authorizing payment of all bills. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. 
Can I have a second? Second. Roll call, please. Caffaro? Yes. Ellis? Yes. Hodson? Yes. Paul? <clears throat> yes. And Framer? Yes. Capture committee reports. Mr. Pauls? Yeah, I just want to bring up that uh, Sunday, April 28th, is uh, Workers' Memorial. That's a day we remember the lives that were uh, given up on losses on building trades and construction industry. Just like to uh, point out four members of Lake Carver Township that gave their lives. Henry Foster, he was an iron worker. Mike Whitlin, an iron worker. Uh, Jimmy Bigelow was an iron worker. And one of my mentors in life, John Carmen Sr. gave his life. Uh, you know, for these members, want them to rest in peace and say a prayer for their families. Where's the memorial to be held? Workers' Memorial is up on the boardwalk at uh, By the Mansion Hall. Hall. Right. You know what time? Uh, I don't have a time on that. Okay. Two were the Trump can collapse. Henry Foster was killed at Tonic Hall, and uh, John Collins was killed in a violent on the sewer plant. Thank you. Mr. Ellis. <clears throat> uh, I want to give a shout out to Public Works at the Clean Community. Uh, like always, did a great job. They did leave early, they didn't get to eat. They also, <laughs> yeah, they had good food. Um, also, want to send our hearts and prayers out to uh, Chief Zoll uh, for recovery and as each and every one pray for his recovery. Thank you. Mr. Hanson. Very good, Ray. Yeah, also, um, could you close in prayers on our uh, Fire Chief of Cardiff? He's got a illness and hopefully he can recover and get back to his old self. Uh, just to appreciate all our um, Public safety uh, people that were involved with the state of Oakland Adams Avenue was something we haven't seen around here in a long time. And, and also our fire departments. I mean, they just had a fire today at of Cardiff, Car or Farmington and Cardiff out on California Avenue. I didn't even know it was in Barbara Township. It's our border with Epsecon, Pleasantville. And uh, for the fire Sunday night out on Tilt River. It's pretty interesting that the, um, because of the changes over the years by the state on the Carter Circle. When that call came in, and nobody could figure out where it really was by the description of the street. Because it was on Tilton Road, but Tilton Road used to come into the circle, and originally was said it was Washington Avenue, that fire road. So again, to our fire and I'll tell you something. The other night, I think they had a crew in, the, in this Carter station. Their response time was incredible. So to our public safety people and everybody else that makes this township work, I appreciate the job. It's a job well done. Absolutely. Mr. Caffaro. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, first, I just want to thank, I mean, we recognized our 911 dispatch. They do an incredible job. I'm glad we did recognize them. I'm glad they do that nationally. Uh, I want to talk, just thank all the volunteers that came out for Community Pride Day this past Saturday. Um, Mayor and I were at the uh, at the uh, Public Works building, and there were well over 100 people there. So it was so well attended. And uh, Mr. Freeman and myself, we had a good crew out at the Nature Reserve uh, planting the uh, pollinator garden, which is a half acre of planting. And we probably had about a dozen volunteers there. The Key Club from the high school was there. The yeah, Key Club. As well as members from our uh, a nature reserve uh, yeah. committee were there and uh, yes. so gratitude to them for their yeah. efforts. Yes, that's right. I mean, it was, a, it was a great time. There was a lot, a lot of people there. There were. That's great. To um, so all the volunteers, thank you so much, and we'll see you in the fall. Excellent. Absolutely. There were, from what Public Works told me, 150 people signed up to clean the community that day. We had a group of teachers, we had a group of firemen, we had members of the auxiliary. We had our private citizens. We had a big group out there. And every year they come out to do it. And it was raining when it started. So we have to say thank you to each and every one of them. And as Mr. Hodson mentioned, last Monday we had an issue at Ivan's Avenue. Um, there were probably more than 100 law enforcement people there. There were EMTs. There were firemen. Uh, there were people from Fusion Church that helped feed people. Uh, there was a lot of uh, involvement by people. and. Patient, patients won out. 
and there are a lot of people that wanted everyone to go in there quick with you know guns a blazing but calm heads prevailed and nobody was hurt and somebody was apprehended and at the end of the day we all take that as a very good win it's a dangerous occupation that people up here in this dice have been in and every night we pray for their safety and they did an incredible job with the calm heads that they had and the professionals that we had on scene so we just want to thank them all and i just want to remind everybody i know this is going to be hard to see and it's been all over social media uh we are starting a, a program honoring our service members that you can buy a banner that supports someone in your family who has been a veteran of a war their picture will be put on the banner they'll be hung up around veterans park we're going to try to get some up before the memorial day parade um i'll have the count hopefully at our next meeting but if you're interested, reach out to our office, go online to social media. Um, it's called the Hometown Heroes Banner Program. And it really is a wonderful way to honor members of your family or somebody who you care deeply for um, with the public demonstration. And that's all I have. Mr. Gentino. Uh, just to reiterate what you said about clean communities, like to give thanks to the public works, but especially uh, Anthony, Tony Yang, and uh, mm -hmm. Mike Cowman for their work in that program. We do an excellent job. And then as you've seen, I'll put my force I was unable to attend, but I promised Mike today that I'd be at the next one. I was. I was trying to save yeah. food for Ray, yeah. you know, but he couldn't stay long <laughs> enough. So, but they were. They did a great job. They did. That's it. That's all. Mr. Friedman. Uh, the only one I'd add is the people who donated gifts. Uh, 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 the, uh, the, the, as far as the giveaway was concerned, but uh, it was a good day for all. It was. It was a wonderful day. Okay. Let's see where we are here. Approvals. Can I have a motion to approve the departmental report for the month of March? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. A motion to approve the April 10th Township Committee meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Can I have a motion to approve the April 10th, 2024 closed session Township Committee meeting minutes? Second. Can I have a second? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Do we have need for closed session? We do. I have one topic. It'll be brief. Good. Okay. Uh, that. <laughs> Resolution 225, authorizing the council committee to convene to close executive session to discuss matters which may involve personnel and or legal matters. Or as the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, permits the exclusion of the public from meetings in certain circumstances, and whereas this public body is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist, and whereas the governing body wishes to discuss matters involving personnel and or legal matters as follows. Legal, Ed Barber Township EMS versus New Jersey Department of Health proposed settlement agreement, anticipated disclosure one year, whereas the minutes will be kept and once the matter involving the confidentiality of the above no longer requires that confidentiality, the minutes can be made public. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Township Committee of the Township of Bay Harbor, County of the Land, State of New Jersey, that the public be excluded from this meeting. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve Resolution 225? Thank you, Yes. I'll second it. Roll call. Yes. Yes. Alice. Yes. Ponson. Yes. Falls. Yes. 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 Yes.